This is Overcoming Performance Christianity, the podcast that leads you on a path to freedom in your walk with Christ. If you're a longtime Christian, but something's missing in your relationship with God, then you might be caught up in performing for the Lord. Find out more as we dive into this episode of Overcoming Performance Christianity. I'm John Fugler, on the road from performance to relationship in my walk with Christ. I'm taking you with me helping you gain freedom from the bondage of performance Christianity. This podcast does that, as well as a devotional series I wrote called Your Life with God. I am a longtime Christian media guy. I love this podcasting thing. Uh, I'm a husband, a father, and a grandfather of nine, and uh, six of them are with us here this week. So, kids, got to keep the door shut and stay on the other side while I record this. Okay. Uh, I'm also the CEO of Fresh Faith 24-7, where we lead you on a path to freedom from the bondage of performance Christianity. Are you ready to get to know Jesus? Paul said, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Find that in Philippians 3.8. This is the podcast for high-performing Christians. And a question I have here as we are asking questions, we always do on this show, but getting on the edge of the new year, or if you're listening to this after the first of the year, then you need to ask this question too. And it's this, why is it that we can have so much biblical head knowledge, but our relationship with Christ has lost its life? Have you been there? Have you been there? There's a sense of distance from God. Uh, We can't break away from sin habits. The Christian life seems like it's become a list of do's and don'ts, while at the same time, we know that the Bible teaches us what we're supposed to do as Christians. There are do's and don'ts in there. We're to obey Christ. So we're confused. Uh, We're frustrated. We've been at the Christian life for years, even decades. So what's wrong? So many solid believers have fallen away from the faith. Have you noticed that? People we'd never expect. Uh, Pastors, Christian leaders, Christian authors, speakers, people that are close to you. Maybe someone who has mentored or discipled you in the past. And I mean, I'm sure you know of one or two who have fallen away. And you ask yourself, how could this happen? How could it happen? And I don't want to see it happen to you. But it can if you live in performance mode. You think that doing all the right things in your faith will build your relationship with Jesus. I've got news for you. It won't. Now, this is a heavy way to start the episode, isn't it? And maybe the new year. But if you're a high-performing Christian, I don't want you to go off the rails. This podcast is dedicated to putting you back on track to a vibrant, exciting, rich relationship with Christ. And in this episode, we're going to look at a a very simple principle that's a step in the right direction, away from performance and into relationship. But I need you to agree with me on one thing, okay? Uh, Be honest. Be honest. Don't fool yourself about your Christian life. If it's dry, admit it. If it's cold, admit it. Not to me, but to yourself and and to God, okay? It's so important. You might be a, a day away from derailing in your Christian life. Don't let that happen just because you couldn't be honest with yourself. Now, on the other hand, you might be doing fine. That's fantastic. You, you might be really honest on target and in deep relationship with Christ. But you know somebody who is not, and maybe this content and this episode could help them. But maybe it is for you. But let me ask this question again, another one. (laughs) Um, How are you doing in your relationship with God? Is it healthy? How healthy? I've developed a spiritual self-assessment that will give you some answers, and it'll take just three minutes to go through this. Include some probing questions that will give you the honest truth about your relationship with Christ. So go get it now. Take it. It's free when you go to my website at freshfaith247.com, freshfaith247.com, or click the link in the show notes. So that's the first point of application. Take the assessment. Please do that. Well, now that I've really pounded you out of the gate in this episode, let me provide some encouragement as we move to our main segment, and that is thirsting for God. 
I'll start with scripture. Psalm 63, one says, I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. Knowing Jesus isn't an activity. It's a state of being. And in this Psalm, David's physical setting reminds him of his spiritual setting. He's in the desert of Judah, a dry and parched land where there is no water, he says in the second half of that verse, Psalm 63, 1, second half of that. Looks around him, he, he sees desolation, and then he looks inside. Desolation again. In his thirstful desperation, he says that his whole being longs for God. Ah, have you ever gone without water for so long that your mind and body deteriorate? And the further you drift into that state, the more helpless you feel. And then you realize you don't have a water source nearby. <laughs> I mean, when that happens, panic starts to set in. I, I used to live in Colorado Springs, uh, well over a mile high elevation. The altitude and the dryness combined just, just sucked the water right out of my body. A guzzling bottles of water was necessary for survival. I mean it. If I went without my H2O, it would just take minutes for the effects to set in. First thing that would happen is my, my mental sharpness and concentration would dissipate, fade away. <laughs> then I'd feel achy. And before I knew it, I was becoming dehydrated. And this happened pretty quickly, too. My attitude would change. I'd be cranky, all because I wasn't hydrated. Finally, Finally, when I'd remember to grab a drink of water, I gulped down two or three glasses out of the tap. Uh, Colorado Springs water is fantastic. It's delicious, flowing right out of the mountains. And slowly my senses would return. My mind and body would come back to normal. Equili equilibrium would set in. <laughs> I believe that God gave us physical thirst to remind us how much we need him. Physical thirst, spiritual thirst. And just as we can't just take a sip of water in the desert, one little sip, we can't take a sip of Jesus on occasion. We need to satisfy our thirst for Jesus always. I'm reminded of the Samaritan woman that Jesus met at the well in John 4. I want to look at it here. I'll just read this passage to you, okay? John 4, and it um, starts in verse 1. Take a look at it here. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from his journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? And Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. Powerful passage, one that we probably all know to some extent. But what do we notice here? First of all, she was thirsty, obviously. So all she had on her mind was water. And Jesus turned the conversation in a different direction, using her physical thirst as the touch point to speak to her about her spiritual thirst. He said he was the living water and that we'll never thirst when we experience him. We have to constantly come to the well, come to Jesus, our living water. 
And the more you do, the more you come to Jesus, that living water, the more you'll know him like Paul knew him. And spending time with Jesus is the best way to experience and know him. You're going to hear about that from my guest, which I'll have on in in a few minutes, spending time with Jesus. But you know what? Oftentimes we do this out of duty. We're supposed to meet with God for devotions, aren't we? That word in itself turns me off, even though I've written devotionals. (laughs) But uh, there's something goes on in my mind when I hear that. It goes against relationship. It speaks of duty. And yeah, there's, there is a duty in meeting with Jesus, but wow, relationship first, huh? Our motivation for meeting with Jesus has to come from a genuine thirst for him. Do you thirst for God? As David's whole being did in that psalm? If not, maybe something's wrong. And I contend that you do thirst, but you don't always realize it's for God. David knew that his God was the only remedy for his parched soul. But we try other things to satisfy the thirst only God can satisfy, and we miss Jesus altogether. Then our time with Jesus becomes a burden, and we leave unfulfilled, and we're still thirsty. So we turn to other things. We turn to work and our kids, to hobbies, entertainment, social media, to meet that need, to meet that thirst. But these things are just sips of water that never reach our souls. It doesn't pass back our, past our tongue. And so let's change our attitude about meeting with Jesus. <laughs> He's such a patient God, isn't he? <laughs> show him up, showing up every day in our life. And he waits for you to show up because you love him. He waits for you to show up because you love him. And how sad would it be if your kids spent time with you just as a duty? Your heart would be wounded. You're you're there for your kids because you love them. And you desire the same from them. You, You desire that they love you. And so when we show up for God, we show up for Jesus. We should do it because we love him. That's another story altogether. Do we really love him? But you thirst. You thirst for God. You thirst for God with a longing soul. Face it, it's, it those are facts. And those are wonderful facts. <laughs> so recognize why you're thirsting and dive into a precious, loving encounter with Jesus. And do it today and tomorrow and the next day. And no matter how tempting it can be, don't fill your emptiness with a Jesus substitute. Fill it with him. I'd like to take you to to Psalm 63. And these verses, these first eight verses, think about each verse. Whatever you're doing right now, whether you're driving or you're working around the home, and I just want you to concentrate. You might be working out right now. Well, concentrate on each verse. Picture David speaking to God. Imagine him being in the desert of Judah. We've talked about that as a visual reminder of his thirsty soul and put yourself in his sandals and cry out to God with your long, thirsty soul. So we looked just at one verse earlier and now we're going to take this eight verses. Here we go. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body yearns for you in a dry and weary land without water. So I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory because your loving devotion is better than life. My lips will glorify you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift my hands. My soul is satisfied with the richest of foods. With joyful lips, my mouth will praise you. When I remember you on my bed, I think of you through all the watches of the night, for you are my help. I will sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. 
your right hand upholds me. Mm. Isn't that powerful? When you get a chance, go back and read that. Meditate on it. Psalm 63, those eight verses. The main reason and the main point of writing the seven devotionals I've written was to encourage rich time with God. Unlike a lot of other devotionals, it's not about life application as much as it's about connecting with Jesus. Because I believe if you connect with Jesus, you will apply biblical principles to your life from your heart. Oh, the, the heart of David as he wrote that psalm. I mean, you just sense it. He was deep into connection with Jesus, which led to, or a connection with God. He didn't know Jesus. Jesus wasn't there yet. Well, he was around, but David didn't know. Connection with God from his heart. As we connect with God, it will lead to an expression of that. You know, in these devotionals, I deal with relevant areas of the Christian life. I deal with prayer, faith, courage, rest, joy, encouragement, other areas, because I believe that they should be applicable. But first, we have to immerse ourselves in our relationship with Christ. Uh, And I would encourage you to satisfy your thirst by coming to him. Please do that. I mean, if you'd like to get one of my devotionals, I'll put a link in the show notes or just go over to Amazon and, and pick one or more up. But I want to recommend some other resources that personal Bible study series that have really rocked my world. I've had some of my best times with God as I've gone through these. I remember I spent an entire year in the book of John. I can't remember if it was two years ago or three years ago. I also did it in Luke. And man, it's not that this study guide was 365 pages long. No, it wasn't. But I just took my time so I could savor it all. And I encourage you to do that too. Whatever you decide to do, whatever guide you might go to, man, just take all the time you need. And when I went through these guides, I thought about all the questions they asked. And I looked deeply at the verses. I I pondered them and I prayed through them. And man, when the Lord was really laying some things on my heart, I stopped. I thought about it. I prayed through that. I'd spend the whole day or two on maybe one verse or one passage. And I think it's that slow, deep study that helps us see the Lord in those passages. So uh, a couple of these series, one is the Life Change series by Navigators. I'll, I'll include a link in the show notes and you can pick that up. It's the Life Change ser- series by Nav Press Navigators. And the other is called the Life Guide Bible Study series, the Life Guide Bible Study series, and that's University Press puts that out. Uh, in fact, I just ordered two of them from University to start 2023. I'm, I'm ready to go. I said, I need something here. And so it's going to help me focus. So Life Change by Nav Press, University Press, uh, Life Guide Bible Study Series. I'll include links in the show notes. And if you've got some favorites, let me know. Are there some favorite Bible study series that you've gone through that help you connect with the Lord? Uh, Share those with me. Send me an email at john at freshfaith247.com. I'll have a link to my email address in the show notes too. I want to hear because I'd like to share that with others. All right, so get into the Word. Get into time with God as you get started in 2023 and make it a big habit. I I know we've all done that. I I know you've had quiet times, devotions, time with the Lord. Our, our, Our guests coming up here in just a moment will be sharing about that as well. But I just say, go to the Lord and get some help if you need to. Have an accountability partner if you need to, and you check in with each other. But maybe you need a a Bible study guide to help you or one of my devotionals. Go for it. That is, we've got to get to know Jesus, and we've got to go to him in order to do that. Well, Yvette Walker is the founder of Positively Joy Ministries. You can find out more at PositivelyJoy.com. And she has a weekly podcast by that name. She's also an author, and her books include Whispering in His Ear, A Month of Joyful Conversations with God. There's a resource, and I'll refer to that. She will, too, as we go through the conversation here, as well as God's Voice and How to Listen. Now, Yvette's ministry focuses on helping people helping people find joy in a life of faith through the power of prayer and the Word of God. 
She's she's a native of Chicago and now lives in Oklahoma. And when we talked, our topic was joy. Yvette, so glad to have you on the show. Thanks for taking the time to be with us. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you so much, John. Well, I'm glad you said happy because the topic is joy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yes. you know, I wrote a devotional on joy. You started a whole ministry on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and that's why I wanted to have you on board here. And um, usually when somebody starts a movement or a ministry on a certain topic, it means uh, they've had to overcome something to get there. So how did this ministry called Positively Joy, that, I'll tell you, that that's amazing. I, I love that name, Positively Joy. How did that come into being? Well, you know what? And I love you. And I love that you love the name because there's a kind of a funny story to that. And it came to be just like I think it does for many people. The Lord told me to do it. And I said, OK, <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's what, the right answer. <laughs> that's what we do. Right. So this was during the pandemic when, to be honest, a lot of podcasts um, were were birthed. And I, I think that there was there's, there's a lot of negativity around the pandemic, but uh, I think that the Lord used that opportunity to get a lot of podcasts started. In fact, I know this. And so anyway, I was going to do a podcast and I always wanted to do it on what I call the, um, the intersection of beauty, hair, and politics. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was, that was the podcast. That's what I was going to do. I'd always wanted to do this. And I, you know, something always got in the way. I couldn't figure out how to do something, something never the time. So there I was at home. I was able to work from home and um, I said, I must be able to figure out how to do this. And I, and I had my laptop and I had some software. I said, okay, we're going to figure this out. And then the Lord very clearly said, yep, you're going to start this podcast, but it's going to be on joy. And I said, oh, okay. Um, what does that mean <laughs> exactly? What are you talking about? And, um, you know, sometimes the Lord wants you to find some things out on your own. So I didn't exactly know, but I started it. And um, originally, if you go back to like the very maybe first or second post, you will see that this podcast was called Finding Joy. Hmm. Uh, but then I realized very quickly that there were a lot of podcasts with that same name. And I said, okay, I need to change this. Lord, what should I do? And again, he clearly said positively joy. So this is funny to me because I'm a former journalist, a little bit of a word nerd and positively joy is not grammatically correct. <laughs> oh, well, it, it, it sounds would, good. <laughs> it would be positively joyous or positively joyful. And that got in my head but that's not what he said. <laughs> and wow. So I said, okay, well, we're just going to go with it. And it's funny because a lot of people really do like the name. It's, it's kind of, I don't know if it's catchy or what, but it, it connects with people. So that's just, you know, if I had followed my own inklings, I would have made it, you know, and, and positively joyful and joyous is probably great too, but, um, but this is what he said, and this is how, what I named it. And so this is pretty much how I got started. Um, for, for me, and I'm, and I'm glad that you said, usually when someone starts something, it's because we've come out of something. And um, certainly we're all human. We have failings and we all have something. But one thing that I had wrestled with was the fact that uh, I was suffering from a little bit of imposter syndrome. Oh, why would you ask me to do this, Lord? There are other people that have like way better stories to tell, that have more interesting things that they've had to overcome than I have. So why am I worthy to do this? And, and I really struggled with that. And I think that there, I think that that alone is keeping a lot of people from sharing their own testimony. Mm. I mean, to be honest, it took me a while to figure out what my testimony really was. And after some time, he revealed to me that my testimony is like a lot of other people's testimony. Um, I'd always been a believer, went to church all my life but there was something missing. And I didn't know, I didn't, first of all, I didn't even know that something was missing. And then when I realized was something that something was missing, I didn't know what it was. I felt very numb in my faith. I like to say I was sleepwalking through mm -hmm. faith, going again, believing, going to church, but he allowed me to have a breakthrough where I realized that it could be so much richer and sweeter that relationship with him. So you had a problem. You didn't even know you had a problem. No, I, I didn't have, I didn't know I had a problem. And 
but I knew that I didn't have, you know, what I'm going to call the, the big traumatic, interesting story. Mm-hmm. Not that I'm asking for that at all, Lord, <laughs> but I, you know, but again, we tend to compare ourselves with other people, don't we? Yeah. We, we want and this so, testimony that's going to attract people and yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, I, I mean, again, I, Lord, I'm not asking for any of this, but you know, but I hadn't lost a child. I hadn't um, suffered from a great disability. I mean, I mean, a lot of the amazing testimonies where we have clearly seen him intervene in those lives. I didn't have that. And so I, I felt like I really wasn't even worthy enough to share my testimony again, not even understanding what it really was. So but I the- think what he's done here is what I think he's done is he's allowed me to show there's a lot of people, I think in my situation that are just thinking it's okay, walking through life, thinking that they got all they need from him and not understanding it can be so much more. Hmm. So the Lord has you on this, I guess, a joy journey right now. Uh, and you're, you've got the podcast, you've got a, a, a book that you've written as well, and you're digging more and more into this, this topic of joy. And with the podcast, you're hearing from guests who are experiencing joy. So you're coming at it from, from different angles. When, what, what has this journey been like then in the last couple of years that the Lord has done some transformation? Has it been gradual? Has it been light just went on? You mentioned the word breakthrough. What, what, what's been like for you? Well, it's interesting. Once you, once you start something and once he asks you to do something, you agree, uh, things cer- certainly start happening. I've met so many people, been to several conferences, um, just came into contact with some amazing people. Um, you know, and I'm not, I don't want to name drop, but, but I've met, you know, some, some, you know, celebrities in our, in our area um, who have really interesting stories to tell that I just never would have come into contact with other than God providing the introduction. Cause really, you know, that's how these things happen. And so I think that um, I started off uh, really once I, once I decide on something, I'm just going to put both feet in. So I started off the podcast twice a week did that for a while. Um, but then I wanted to create the online ministry. I have a Facebook group and wanted to start writing. So I kind of turned that volume down to once a week. Uh, when it was twice a week, I was doing a teaching from myself and then an interview guest. So I've kind of tuned that down for a little bit because I've got some other projects going on. And now it's once a week where I am uh, interviewing guests and really hearing from it's one thing to, to have your own testimony revealed, but also to, to when you are connected with other people who have such amazing testimonies and we can see how God intervened. Uh, it, it's just so, it's so, it's so strong. And then mm. you can see, okay, it's not just me. Other people are, are understanding this. Other people are, are receiving these same gifts. And it's just amazing. I, I want to get into that and, and what you're seeing some commonalities in people's lives who are moving into joy. But for you personally, first, let me ask, how are you different now? As you're on this joy journey? How would you describe your life now compared to what it was like? Mm-hmm. So when people think about joy, they often think that it is a feeling that it's happiness, um, or some kind of um, something like that. And we all know that we're not going to be happy all the time. I mean, he, I don't believe he built us like that. You know, we have a lot of things that we go through. But what people don't understand is that joy is not a feeling, it is faith. And it's being completed in a way that nothing or no one else can complete us. So I have a signature or the podcast has a signature uh, Uh, scripture verse it's in john chapter 15 uh, below the famous vine and the branches uh, down in uh, in verse 9 where jesus basically explains that if you abide in the father's love and 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 do his will then we will be filled with joy and this joy is the only joy that completes us Mm -hmm. i think there are a lot of people chasing what they think is joy they are chasing people They are chasing things. They are chasing addictions. They are chasing lots of things when there's really only one thing to chase and it's the Lord. Uh, And that's the only joy that will fill you with this peace and this contentment that I can't really 
explain. So if you ask me how I'm different than I was before, it's this feeling of peace and contentment that I didn't have before. Do you, uh, I, I'm sure you still struggle with it. What, how do you handle it now when you're wrestling with this? Now you're leading this ministry on joy and you're going through the day and you're not feeling joyful. Um, just, you said it's not a feeling, but, but still there's not that joy. I mean, you're not perfect. How, how do you handle that? What, how do you get back into that, that sense of joy? Well, I think for me, um, you know, I, I grew up in the church, but I grew up Catholic and I wasn't reading the Bible every day. So to be honest, I have been digging into his word uh, these days uh, for the last few years in a way that I really had not before. Learning exactly what his will is for me and trying to understand that. Um, yes, you know, yes, I'm not happy all the time. And again, I really do want to, you know, kind of use the difference between those words, happy and joy, but I am always filled with joy because I'm filled with him. Mm. So, um, when things don't go well, you know, when I'm angry at my husband or when something went wrong at work or when anything might happen, I, I'm not consumed with that in a way that I used to be. And, and I know you're asking me, like, what do you do? I don't do anything. Mm. The fact that I now recognize what true joy is, it's just always there. Mm. You know, at Fresh Faith 24-7, we're really centering on knowing Christ and always coming back to him. And it sounds like you're, you're saying this as well. There's no magic pill, no formula. No. Just come back to Jesus. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. And he's always there. And what I really, you know, we're about to go into season four of the podcast. And what I really want to focus on in that is understanding that he is always there with us. And if we open ourselves to that in our everyday life at work, going to the cleaners, whatever, if we are open to him at all times, we can receive that joy. And again, it's not like turning on, like you said, turning on a switch or anything. It's just going to always be there, but we have to I mean, we have to remember that we have to, to be open. Uh, and some of that could be get into his word, um, you know, read and, and do the exercises and devotionals, wake up and pray and do devotionals in the morning or before you go to bed. Um, I tend to do it at night before I go to bed. Um, there are, there are things that we can do that will help us keep, I guess, will keep us in this state of joy, hmm. but it's always surrounding him. What are you finding from your guests? What are you hearing from them? Any commonalities when it comes to joy that they're experiencing, things they're getting getting through? Yeah, oh, absolutely. So, you know, in, in many of the guests will have kind of an event that happened that changes them in some way, right? Um, and it's always about, it's always about how they saw themselves as broken but then understanding that the Lord doesn't see them that way and the Lord doesn't see them as broken and understanding that the Lord, even though he didn't cause these things to happen, he, but he allows things to happen, but he is with them all the time. Hmm. And so I, once, once they recognize that, and again, read his word, try to fully understand their will for him. And I know some people also try to, see the goodness in a bad situation. And everyone's not equipped to do that. I mean, he equips us with a lot, but, but there's levels, right? And I think it, it is easier for some people to see the good that might come out of a horrific car accident that led to something else. But other people maybe aren't at a place where they can see that yet. So I don't wanna say, hey, see the good in everything because you know, people might not be ready for that yet, but many people are able to do that. Where's God taking you today in his word? Well, so we have, obviously we, we have a, a Facebook community where we really try to build community with each other. Right now I am sharing uh, once a week, I'm kind of sharing uh, kind of a community member spotlight on mm -hmm. all the wonderful things that people are doing. So I'm, I'm really trying to be encouraging. I really try to encourage every day. Um, as you said, um, have the devotional, but I'm coming out with a study guide to the devotional so that people who may want to go a little further or maybe get together in small groups 
can have an actual kind of a larger form journal study guide where they can kind of take through some of the lessons that I talk about. And, um, and there's, and there's some other, you know, my testimony, the one that I have really tried to go through, uh, with the Lord has, he's been revealing it to me. Um, there is a book in that, and I'm, I'm thinking about that right now. Mm. And one thing I'm thinking about is this word joy and breaking it down to J O Y just one. Yes. Mm. Mm. We just, all we need is to say one yes Mm. and open ourselves to the Lord. And so I'm working on something around that. Oh, that's great. That's great. And you offer this, uh, this booklet, uh, bigger, better faith, five ways to choose to enjoy and find time to talk to God every day. Yes. Five ways to choose joy. That's pretty cool. Uh, tell us about that. It is. And you know, people like how to, you know, how to booklets and things like that understand it's, you know, you're going to continue down this journey for a while, but the idea is to, and as part of this idea of being open. So you need to create uh, space in your, around you and space in your heart to really fully open yourself to him and get into his word. And so I talk about um, physically creating a space in your home, uh, creating a space in your day, creating a faithful habit, things like that, and kind of talk to you about how you might do some of these things. Because we all say, I'm so busy. I don't have time. I want to, I want to do it. I want to learn more. I want to read the Bible more. Um, But we, you know, I don't even want to say make excuses. We are busy. I mean, there's a lot of things going on, but there are ways to do it. And sure, we should want to do it. It should, when we wake up in the morning, it's the first thing we should want to do. But again, we're humans and Mm -hmm. we have our failings. And so I try to create uh, this little guide, uh, which also has some room in the back for for journaling and notes. And also there's some scripture to memorize um, just to kind of help people if they really are wanting to do something, but don't know how. So they can pick that up on your your website and it's a download, right? just go to positivelyjoy.com and it's right at the top and top in the, and right in the next page too. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Um, what do you find um, as you're interviewing your guests, that's one thing, but as you have people in your community, what are the things they're struggling with now that mm-hmm. you're able to minister to, to, to bring joy into their lives? What are those obstacles, roadblocks, hangups, where are people at today? I think people are suffering in the same areas they've always been suffering. And that could be, um, you know, the people around me right now um, are mature and uh, have old families are getting older. And so um, their parents might be suffering from age related illnesses or Alzheimer's. I've had Alzheimer's in my family and my husband had Alzheimer's in his, his family, his mother suffered from it. And I, I write about that in the, in the devotional. Um, that's really, really difficult. Um, other, and, and, and in that, and I write about it in the, in the uh, devotional, I write about not believing in a lie, not making a lie an idol, not thinking that there's nothing that can be done not even, you know, God, God can do anything. He can conquer anything. I'm not saying that he will take away this, this, this illness, but he can be there with you to help you through it. Hmm. And there's been in situations like the one I write about with my mother-in-law, I just felt like there was nothing that I could do to help the situation that she was having during, um, an attack of this Alzheimer's. And, and, um, I very quickly learned that that was a lie. And that was a lie that I believed in and believe that lie was stronger than, than Jesus. Um, other things I think that people are suffering from, um, there's, it's difficult these days with the economy, um, losing jobs, uh, just household budgets. There are the same things again, that people were suffering before the pandemic, but I think it seems like it's amplified that. Mm. And also we've just come through a difficult time in our country as well. So, um, but the, the answer is the same. The answer is the same. It's to understand that Jesus is there and can help us through this. 
he didn't promise that we would never have problems, but what he promised was that he would be there. And I think that sometimes we get so caught up in the problem itself, which is very easy to do. And again, I really want to emphasize that I'm not saying that I'm perfect and I don't feel those same ways too, but understanding that we're not alone in it. Hmm. And it's great to have family around us, which is awesome, but there's someone else, someone even more important and more powerful. And we need to recognize that and believe it. Well, listener, I'd like to encourage you to check out Positively Joy. I'll have a link in the show notes. Uh, Yvette Walker's uh, booklet, Bigger, Better Faith, and also check out her devotional as well. Just, just dive in. If God is moving in your heart right now, you're saying, man, I could use this. I really could. And you can be around other believers who are uh, really seeking steady joy in their life in, in real life issues. We're talking about real life and how that, how that works out and how that plays out. I would encourage you to go there. Any closing words, remarks, Yvette? I would just say, well, first of all, thank you so much for what you're doing. Um, your ministry is so important. And I just really want to encourage everyone to, you, we have the opportunity now through these innovations in technology and other things to surround ourselves with his word. I mean, we can just go to our phones now and call up his word very quickly. So surround ourselves through podcasts, through these resources, um, through things like this, through your work and through the work I'm doing um, to know that he's there and that there's other people who, who understand what you're going mm-hmm. through and, um, and are believers and not only believers, but seekers. I think that there's a difference between believing and seeking. Mm-hmm. When you go into seeking mode, I think that is where you begin to, to potentially see the breakthroughs and understand that he's there for you in a way that you didn't know before. Good time of sharing with Yvette. Uh, we all want a magic bullet for the Christian life, don't we? Something that will just totally transform us, this, this one step, two step, three step, whatever it is. And Yvette and I talked about joy, but it's the same for other areas of our life. And when we think about, Lord, give me faith, uh, help me be a better parent, et cetera, et cetera. You fill in the blank. Where do you want a change in your life? We want that that magic bullet, don't we? But did you notice what Yvette said was the secret to living a life of God? Spending time with God. It all comes back to Jesus and immersing ourselves in the word and in prayer, spending time with God, getting into his word. And her joy study guide is focused on that. So as we get started in the new year, how about recommitting yourself to spending time with God? I've been hammering that on you for a while here in the show. So, but make a commitment. Uh, as I said the other day, I ordered a couple study guides to help me get started, to help me with my commitment. So, why not do that? In fact, go to Yvette's website and pick up her resource on joy. I have a link in the show notes. We've talked about her website, uh, and I'll, I'll link up in the show notes. Earlier, I shared how important it is to, to meet with God to satisfy our thirst. That's the theme in this episode. I mentioned a few resources to help you in your personal Bible study and in prayer, and then we just added events to it. And all these are in the show notes, so no excuse to find the link and go after them. But right now, I want to tell you about the Freedom Path training inside Fresh Faith 24-7. It's truly focused on those who are struggling with performance Christianity. If that's you, then I created this for you. Let me tell you more about this. It's, it's good stuff. It's focused. It's a four-module video training that puts you on the path to freedom. That's why I call it Freedom Path Training. It's the core of Fresh Faith 24-7. And it comes with a playbook. So you can follow along with the videos. You can take notes. You do the assignments. And the content will go from your head to your heart to your life. Escape performance. Embrace Christ. Move from spiritual dryness to joy, peace, and fulfillment. And your relationship with Christ will be fresh again. Let me run through uh, these modules really quickly for you here so you get an idea of what these are about. Four modules. The first one I call The Awakening. There's seven sessions. And we talk about my story and your story. We all have a story. Uh, You'll learn about an important concept I call the above-below principle. I believe that understanding this will turn your life around from performance to relationship. That's the start. We'll do some stone clearing. 
Get those rocks out of the way that are keeping you from this vibrant relationship with Jesus. I'll lead you through an exercise to help you break free from performance Christianity. We'll go deeper to study relationship and also a thing called covenant. That's just module one, seven sessions. You go at your own pace. And then module two is what I call the core. So we move from the awakening to the core. This is the center of the bullseye. How can you possibly stay out of the performance trap unless you know and practice healthy relationship with Jesus? Know it and practice it. We're going to take several sessions to go deeply into this. I know I've, I've talked about knowing Jesus in this podcast. It's, that's what this is all about. And I believe it's a secret to life. Well, we're going to talk in detail about that in module two. And I'll have a key assignment for you in there that could turn the ship. So first it's the awakening, and then module two is the core, and then module three in the Freedom Path training is the depth. Now I take nine sessions with this, and I'll tell you why. Uh, once you understand having a healthy relationship with Christ, you have to step into this third module. And the depth with nine sessions are really deep studies into key identities of Christ. So we get right into to getting to know Jesus. And my hope is that after you complete this module, you'll know Christ better than you ever have. Yeah. And you'll see Jesus in a whole new way. We talked about thirst. Last episode, we talked about hunger. Well, your thirst and hunger for Christ. I hope that the end of module three is going to be uh, insatiable. You just want more of Jesus. So that's the depth in module three. And then Module four is what I call the follow through. And this is what you'll learn to make knowing Christ a way of life. Consistency, consistency. How, how to avoid pitfalls that can send you backwards, like the Ephesians trap, I call it. You'll find out more about that. You'll learn how to establish practices that will grow your relationship with Christ and not and that slipped back into performance. Now, I, you think of, okay, practices, doing. Yeah, this is different. As you get into this, you'll understand it's not performance, but there are practices you have to put into motion. It's a long haul, this whole thing of getting out of performance, the freedom, and into relationship, into knowing Christ. And if you've been a performer for years, it's going to be there nipping at your heels. It does to me. I mean, it's just not gone. I tend to go back in that direction. So we need follow through. I need follow through. And that I think has been the reason I've been able to keep out of performance for the most part. And that's what this module is all about. Seven sessions, the follow through. So that's the freedom path training. We've got the awakening, the core, the depth, and the follow through. And I believe this is life changing. You go at your own speed. God has us all going in different paces. So you go at your own speed. Eat it up. Go deep with Jesus in the midst of it all. Of all those principles, I bring it to life with some interviews of believers who are experiencing freedom in their relationship with Christ. I want to illustrate it. So we have conversations with believers who are living this out. They go through their struggles. They share honestly, and hopefully it'll help put uh, more application into this for you. So Freedom Path Training, it's all part of Fresh Faith 24-7 when you become a member at freshfaith247.com. People have asked me, what is this Fresh Faith 24-7? Well, I wanted to take some time to unpack the Freedom Path Training because this is the core of it. This is where I have you start. And then we go out from there. But this really is the thing that will turn the ship in your life. So will you become a member at Fresh Faith? 247.com. I look forward to, uh, you can find out more also about the other uh, benefits, the ministry resources in freshfaith247.com when you go to the website. And uh, there's so much in there. Looking forward to seeing you on the other side. Well, next episode, next episode, we'll be talking about knowing, again, knowing the Christ of the cross. And that key word in there is of, knowing the Christ of the the cross. You'll see why in our next episode, why that is the key word. Make sure you take the assessment, okay? That's absolutely free. You find it on my website. I got a pop-up even there that comes out at you and say, hey, take the assessment. So go get it. That's the important first step. God bless you. We'll see you next episode as we know the Christ 
of the cross.